Come on up, Brother Etienne. He is from Stellenbosch, South Africa. And that's near Cape Town, if you know anything about South Africa. It's wine country. And um, if I'm not mistaken, are you Huguenot descent? Yes, it's obvious. And for those of you who don't know all about the Huguenots, you need to get with Francine Lovell, and she will totally fill you in. There she is. Uh, it, it's, it's a stream of revivalists going back to what year? How, how far back? The, for 300 years, around from the 1500s. 1500 plus. Right up to today. So we just bless you as an apostle, as a prophet, as, as all that you are in God. We bless you to release everything that God has given you without any hindrance. In the name of Jesus, bless you. Good morning. Is it on? Keep talking. Well, we started on a, on a good way with all the worship. How amazing. What a great time. But let's pray together. Oh, hallelujah. Father, how amazing. When you enter the room, how majestic you are. Lord, we come in the Spirit and we bow before you because you are worthy. Lord, and we have a gift for you. We give you our crowns because you are the King of Kings. And we come this morning, Father, and we welcome all of creation, all the men in white linen, all the clouds of witnesses, all the angelic beings, the seven spirits of God, and we all gather together to worship you, Father, to release heaven on earth, to release the sound and the fragrance of heaven in this place, to prepare a way where you can come and habitate, Father, where we can host you. And we just open up our hearts and our spirits. And we ask that you will release your word in power in us to come and transform us, as you showed me this morning in a vision. You're not just yet to change us, as Eva said yesterday, that you are give, giving large and great steps. Now, Lord, you showed me how you come and you catapult us into new dimensions. And we are ready, Father. We surrender to you this morning. We just come and we die in ourselves. That you become everything. That you get restored on the throne of first love. That you get restored as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we bless you, Father. We bless you in the name above all names of the great I Am. Yeshua Mashiach. Amen and amen. What an amazing time. What an amazing season. I'm going to share some encounters with you. Um, and when I share encounters, don't look at me. Look at the God who created that encounter. 
because he's your encounter. No man is your encounter. God is your encounter. I was sitting about six, seven weeks ago in my study one morning, and the next moment in the natural, an angel appeared in my study in front of my desk, and he pointed at me and said, Hey, you! You're not just another man. You're somebody special. You've been appointed for this time and season. Don't look in the natural. Look in the special, in the, in the, in the spirit. You're not just another man. And I believe, I know it, that message is not just for me. It is for all of you. And I want to tell you this morning, you're not just another man. You're somebody special. You've been appointed. You've been ordained. You've been equipped for this time and season. And when I have encounters with David and Paul and Elijah and Enoch in heaven, I can tell you this morning, they have got such a jealousy upon all of us. They have desired to live in this time and season. Do you realize how special you are? How amazing it is to have been ordained by God the Father to live in the end times. And it's time that we see it. It's time to see it. It's time to acknowledge it in God. To start seeing how precious you are. Look at our states of our countries, America, even my country. I don't even talk about my country. Even worse. But you know what? The problem is not the people. The problem is not the politicians. The problem is us. Sons of God. We have not done and stepped into our positions. We have not taken possession. We have not ruled. Amen. First rule in the Spirit to manifest, bring heaven to earth. And there is time and season that God calls on the sons of America to rise up. Stop playing Jesus and become like Jesus. God created by His Word, so change the atmosphere, change of situations by the Word of God in power. And that is why America has been chosen, has been ordained by God to be the prophetic nation of the world. They've, that's why they've got the eagle. And God is calling on the eagles to rise up. The eagles are supposed in the Old Testament, the eagles had influence on the kings. The kings had prophets. Where are the prophets of the presidents of the world? Who's to blame? We are to blame because we did not show trust and faith in God to step into that favor that He has created through the cross. And that is why God in the season, I believe there's a season of grace upon America. He is shouting out. The earth is shouting out. All of creation is shouting out to the prophets and the sons of God in America to stand up. To stand up. They need to be restored in the place as kings and rulers. Amen. The time for truth. It's a season of truth in the kingdom. It's time for the true word of God. Not this watered down word of God. Seeker friendly tickling ears. Messages that we are getting. Because we've got fear of people, not fear of God. Believe me, when you've seen Him face to face, you will never compromise again in your life. And that's why Jesus died, so that you could see Him face to face. This is the best season, as I said last night, depending on what your relationship is with God. Depending what your knowledge is of the Word. The 
depending on how much you've died in yourself and surrendered. Depending if he's your first love then you're going to walk in the glory of God. On the 1st of June, there were major shift in the, in the spiritual realm started. I can tell you, it is chaos in the spirit. Absolute chaos. It's amazing. It's tough. But as our brother Stephen earlier said, it's a time for God in this time to manifest His glory. It's the most glorious time available to you. Doesn't matter what your circumstances are. You've been guaranteed victory. So why do you worry? Do you trust God or not? This is an amazing time. Listen, I've learned more of God and about the spiritual realms in the last three months and in my whole life that I've walked with God. I've seen in so many dimensions and so many things that I'm blown away and I just realize every day, Lord, I don't know you. We know nothing. How can we ever come to a place where we say we are satisfied? I had a guy last uh, a, a few months telling me, I'm in the perfect world. I've got nothing more to do. And when you make a declaration that, like that, you're actually declaring in the heavenly places that I am manifesting Jesus in perfection. You're actually bringing a curse in front over yourself. But let me tell you the season. I was so amazed when I heard the theme of this conference. Because literally about two weeks before I heard it, the Lord gave me a word in Deuteronomy 11.11. That's where God speaks to Israel where they have got to go and they have to walk into the promised land. And He speaks to Israel and said, and the Amplified says, but the land which you enter to possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water of the rain of heavens. Listen what God speaks. The day that you got reborn, that you got saved, everything, God gave you an inheritance and a possession. The land that you are going to possess. And that is our problem. Have you possessed? Have you possessed? It's a land of hills and valleys, and, and the word is so prophetic. When God speaks about the hills and the valleys, when He refers to the hills, He refers to His holy mountain in heaven. Because your inheritance as a son is in heaven and earth. And the valleys is referring to earth. Have you possessed your promised land? And come and drink. From the rains of heavens. Come and drink my abundant blessing. When God says come and drink from the rains of heaven, He declared upon your life that the storehouses of heaven have been opened upon your life. But the key is the possession. Have you possessed? I love it. Psalm 36. This 8 and 9, it says, The relish and feast on the abundance of your house. He's talking about the abundance of the house of the Lord. And you cause them to drink of the stream of your pleasures. What is the key? To be able to be seated, to occupy your seats in the stream of pleasures of God, stream of His blessing, of His equipping, of His ordination, streams of His anointing. For with you is the fountain of life in your light, Do we see light? Fountain of life. Have you realized that your body's got 76% fluid, water in it? 
so that you could make the streams of living water, the rivers of pleasure, a place of habitation, so that your body could adjust to the presence of God. So that you can release the sound and the vibration of heaven here on earth. And that is what God calls us. To stand in the streams of pleasure. Abundant glory, abundant blessing to drink from the rains of heaven because God's blessings are into eternity. You've been created for eternity. Creation never stops. And as you told me just over a year and a half ago when I just came out of a basically a deathbed experience, he said, your reward in heaven will be according to your participation with heaven. But you need God's blessing, God's favor to participate. You need to see. Come and see. Come and taste and see. The Lord is good. How can you manifest something if you have not seen it? And seeing starts in your heart. If you don't see, if you don't hear, you've got a heart issue. You've got a soul issue. The reason to want to see and to hear is about yourself and not about God first. Do you truly want to see to glorify Him? Or is it about yourself? I believe In this season, we're going to see a move of God like never, ever, ever in history, in creation. I'm going to give you a second encounter. I sat in my study. And the next moment, the Lord said, look up in front of you. And my house is seated in this town, Stellenbosch. It's the highest road in the town. And when I look across, I look to Cape Town, and there's a mountain, Table Mountain. And the next moment... The angel of the Lord of Cape Town stood on the mountain, huge, hundreds of meters high, at least 500 meters high. And he said, the Lord said, go to the places and tell them the places where I have prophesied that a great move of God's going to start. And tell them they better align quickly because I am coming to start and release my move. And I pretty much believe and trust it's happening from the 1st of September. That is the message I get. So align yourself, prepare yourself, because the Lord showed me those who are not aligned and prepared will drown. They will not make it because God's glory is so majestic, so huge, so amazing that people will not know how to host and to steward it. And that's a problem in the season because of our lack of knowledge, our lack of surrender. We've got a problem in the body of Christ. We love Jesus and everything, and we visit Him, but we're not hosting Him. We need to start hosting Him. You need to be woven into Him, never separated. That's first love. First love means I am never separated. And I believe that key for the season is in Hebrew 1. How are we going to do it? I want to tell you this morning whom you are. What do we need to do to stand in that river of living waters, in the fountain, in the river of pleasure, to be consumed by it, that each and every cell in your body needs to be consumed by the Holy Spirit. Each and every cell in your body needs to worship God. Yes. 
Now, whenever the word speaks about Jesus, he refers to him, son of God. He's actually referring to you as well. What are you? You're a son. So whenever something has been given or appointed or ordained to Jesus, it means the same thing has been ordained to you. The same might, the same authority, the same power, the same dominion. Let's start. In many separate revelations, each of which sets forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. Many separate revelations, which are partial truths. Why? God is a perfect circle. And a circle's got many segments in. We have not got the capacity and the knowledge of God yet to consume and to host the full spectrum. So what happens? Say I tell these five people in front, I give them a, a script and I say, read it, what message do you get? Each of them might give me a different answer. Who's wrong? Nobody. Because God will meet them where they are in their life at that time and season. Tomorrow they might read the same thing, they might get it different. That is part of the segments of your perfect circle and what you get revelation from God. The Hebrews believe there are at least 40 dimensions, revelations in each scripture. I personally believe there are much more. And what do we need to do? You and I need to become that perfect circle because then you become beginning and end. That means that you are seated in Christ, in His character, His authority, everything of Him. That means you step into a place of maturity, becoming mature and mature and mature every day. Segment, revelation upon revelation upon revelation. God spoke to them in those times through the prophets. Jesus died on the cross because he cried out, he desired, he is desperate for a face-to-face relationship with you. Is it possible? Yes. Is it difficult? No. Depends on your obedience. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son. Whom are you? Son of God. God declares upon you, I am speaking to you. God said it. So you and I have got no excuse to ever say, I don't hear his voice. He speaks loud and clearly. Listen what he says. This is what you and I have been Receiving, given to us out of love. Whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Who he has appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. People, have you taken and acknowledge and receive the gift that God has given you. Deuteronomy 11, 11, come, take possession of the promised land. Have you taken possession of your inheritance? That is why our countries and the world is in chaos. Because we're trying to rule in the flesh instead of your war. Ephesians 6, 12, is in heaven, is the spiritual realms that we don't realize that we've firstly been created as spirit and then we manifested in the flesh. That this is just a place of visitation. Your habitation is in heaven. Taking possession means that you are ruling, you're sitting in Christ at the right hand of the Father in a kingly position, ruling, decreeing, declaring.
the way that we are ruling is the way that we acknowledge and have received the cross and the sacrifice of the Lamb. The way that we are ruling, the way that we've taken possession of our inheritance, According to that, you show Jesus what do you think of his gift, of his sacrifice. Given you soul ownership. When you're seated in Christ, at the right hand of the Father, you are seated in the throne room where the stream of living water starts. Where the sea of glass and crystal, where all the scrolls of each and every one of you are buried in underneath. Because each and every one of us has got a scroll and we need to go and receive it and eat it. You need to read your scroll on a daily basis that you know what is God's plan, what's God's mission for you in that day. You need to have an encounter with the Lion of Judah because he's the one opening up the seals of the scrolls. Yes. People have been caught up in religion. We think things are far out there. It's not. What happens? Where does the stream of living water need to come out of your belly? How does it happen? Where does it form? It forms in the golden bowl right here. The golden bowl is where your spirit man and your heart come together. And where they come together, it forms a golden bowl, and out of your golden bowl, the stream of living water comes. We need to be in touch with the great I am. What you touch, you become. What you host your eyes on, what you feast with your eyes on, you become. He's the fountain of life. You and I need to become that instrument of life, of resurrection. And it's all about intimacy. It's all about hosting Jesus. It's all about hosting the Holy Spirit. Earth is just a nucleus of what is given us to rule over. It's given you possession of all of creation. Nothing are hidden to the sons of God. Nothing. It's a time that we are starting to live, that we need to live to reflect the truth of Jesus. The world's in chaos because the world has not seen the truth of Jesus. Lawful owner of all things, also by and through him whom he created the worlds and the riches of space and the ages of time. What does a son of God do? A son of God creates. That is a desire of the Father. He created His sons to be with Him all the time, to create with Him into eternity. Creation never stops. What have you created with God? What is your testimony? That is what's in you. Creation is in you. People believe it. I have seen it, not out of books or out of DVDs. I don't read in books and I don't listen to DVDs. That's my season that I'm in. 
That's how God uses me. He's my rabbi. He's my teacher. But we need the revelation. Paul says in Ephesians 3, my mysteries of heaven, I got through revelation. There's a, a translation that says, which I love, it says, the mysteries of heaven is seated in revelation. That is where you and I need to be seated in revelation so that we get the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding to participate with God, to take soul ownership, possession, and to release heaven on earth. It's no use to have heavenly encounters. It's nothing to have heavenly encounters. It's a natural thing, daily. But what do you bring from heaven to earth? What do you come and change? What do you come and release? That is the key. Verse number three. Highlight it. Never remind the devil of this whenever he comes close to you. The son, he's talking about the son, which are you and I. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. That's who you are. He's a perfect imprint and very image of nature. You have been created, I have been created to be the sole expression of the glory of God. Where do I get the glory? In the rivers of pleasure because the abundant blessing flows through there. So I need to be seated in the river which is in Christ. Yes. The perfect image, the perfect imprint. God is looking for people that pursue that. God is looking for people where he sees a reflection of himself where he can manifest. Yeah. And it's available. It is available to all of us. Listen what a son does. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by its mighty word of power. Upholding. Maintaining the universe. If Jesus had to appear in the natural right now, and he had to ask you, how are you maintaining earth in creation? What are you going to say? And you see how much God loved us. He made it easy. You don't have to do anything physically. He maintained and upholded and by His mighty word of power. How did creation happen? God spoke in power and it formed. Holy Spirit was instructed, hovered and brooded upon the word. And it gave life. You and I need to speak. Holy Spirit will brood and hover upon it. And it will create and give life. It's as easy as that. But where do I need to be seated today? I need to be seated in Christ from the throne. On the holy mountain of God. In my kingly position. My royal priesthood. According to the order of Melchizedek. And as a son. Have you ever seen your president, my president, going to war and fighting? No, because he took up his kingly position. You have been created in that position. What does a king do? He instructs. He instructs. You need to start seeing yourself seated in Christ. That's a problem. We see Christ in us, but we don't see ourselves in Him. If we're going to look in that manner where we see Him in us, you're never going to see your spirit man 
as the giant that he's been created to be. You're always going to see him as a little spirit inside of a body, and you're not going to see a spirit hosting your body. There's a difference. When you've stepped into Christ in the spiritual realms, your body, your spirit takes on his image. It's been created in his image. Revelations 1, I stand with seven stars in my hand. So what's your possibility to be able to stand with seven stars in your hand? But if you just see Christ in you, not yourself in him, you're never going to see yourself in that place and position of standing with the seven stars. Start thinking Jesus. Start thinking the Father. It is so important. It is so important. When he had by offering himself a When it by offering himself accomplished a cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Yes. That is where you see that. Are you still there? Are you living it? A divine sacrifice and that is one of the problems which I believe in this time which is the key and I'm going to try and explain it to you as good as possible as a way as I received it from Jesus key is Romans 12 1 I appeal to you therefore brethren I beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy to God, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. Have you become that living sacrifice? That is when you die in yourself and you surrender. And I believe the devil stole a lot from people. <clears throat> because of that, we've been, we've been taught you can't come before God if you have sin. But let's go back. In the Old Testament, who clings to people? To whom did they go? To the high priest. To whom did they take the offering? To the priests. Who's your high priest? You can't go to him. How are you ever going to be cleansed? We need to pursue a relationship with the high priest. You need to restore him there. And then they took the goats or the sheep, the sacrifice to God. And how did it work? Let me tell you, this is a daily thing that I do in my life. And I can tell you out of experience, testimony, it works. The people went. They repented. Because you need to present a sacrifice to God, blameless and spotless. So you go, you repent. I present myself now blameless and spotless to you as a holy sacrifice. What did the, royal, the high priest do? First, he slit the throat. The blood came out first. Why? Lord, I surrender. Blood is life. I surrender my life so that I could receive your life. Then they cut off the head of the goat or the sheep. Lord, cut off my head. I surrender my thoughts, my plans, my will, my choices to you 
so that I could receive yours. Then they cut off the legs of the lamb. Lord, I surrender my hands and feet that it won't be possible for me to walk or do any, go anywhere in my own ways. That I can step into my sonship where it says a son of God of those in Romans 8 who are controlled by my spirit. What happens with you? If you've got no legs, if you become a son of God, you are seated where? In Christ. What happens now? It's like a lady that's pregnant with a baby. You, the baby in Christ, he walks wherever he goes, you are going. You can't even walk. You are fully controlled by him. That's sonship. What did he do next? They opened up the lamb, took out all the intestines, all the filth, everything, and they put it on the fire. Lord, I ask your fire to enter into me, to burn me. Get rid of everything that stands between you and myself. Cleanse me. Fire of God's a blessing. It's a love act because God draws you closer in fire. When you're in the desert, when you're in a storm, whatever you want to call it, it's the best place you can be. That's elevation. That's an upgrading to you. And what is the last thing that he did? That took off the sheepskin. Lord, remove my false covering from me. I don't want to be a wolf and lamb clothing. And clothe me with Jesus. Why? Because we in churches on Sundays, we are so holy. But what happens when we leave church and go home? We become a wolf and sheep clothing. We are false. Remove that false covering. Remove the DNA of a wolf out of me, Father. And then you are a living sacrifice. And that is a thing that you do every day of your life. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. And when you've done it, what do you do? You can stand up and say, Lord, now I come to you. I present myself as a king unto you, as a royal priest unto you, as your son. Bah, mandate, authority, rule. Yeah. Take possession. When you step into your priesthood, your kingship, your sonship, you become the perfect bride. God is looking, he's coming to earth, what? To look for a blameless, spotless, perfect bride. So you first need to become that living sacrifice. And it's an amazing time. I love the scripture, I love Hebrew. Can't get enough of it. He himself became as much superior to an angels as a glorious name title which he has in, inherited is different and more excellent than theirs. We've read in the scriptures that we are lower than angels, but what is the key? How do you want to be higher? You've been, you got an inheritance. What title did Jesus get? Son of God. When you step into your sonship, your title, you are higher than angels because you are the ruler. But religion told us, no, a title has been given, it refers to a title, a son. When you become a son, you are higher. You are the ruler. For to whom, to which of the angels would God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father and he will be my son. And moreover, when he brings the firstborn son again into the habitable world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Let me make this clear. No angel must worship you. And you worship no angels. You've only got one God. There are too many people running after angels. Can I be honest with you? I see angels all day, all the time. To see an angel is like seeing anybody else. But to see God all the time, something different. 
you don't want to see anything else. Know why we don't see angels? Because we are so busy talking to devils. We are so busy with the demons. We know them. Tell people to tell you about the angels. They can hardly say a thing. Ask them about the demonic. They'll tell you everything. They know them. We're missing the glory of God. You're missing. Referring to the angels, he said, who made his angels winds and his ministering servants flames of fire. Oh. We walk out of this place as often we'll walk out and suddenly there's a wind blowing. Oh, the wind's blowing. What a breeze. And we don't acknowledge the gift of God around you. Lord, this wind, that is how you become heavily minded. This wind, is it from you? Are these angels? Yes, they are angels, Etienne. What do I need to do with them? What do I need to use them? God's given you angels to participate, ministering angels, flames of fire. There's a court in heaven. They call it the court of the angels where you and I appear. And the Lord asks you, what have you done with the angels? Yeah. Those are given to you as a gift. What have you made with the gift of God? Because every day of your life, there are angels around you. There are angels instructed by God to, to accompany you. And that's what a ruler does. When people come to me and say, I spend five, six, seven hours on my face in warfare, fighting and it's tough. I think, whoa, they are missing everything. They're wasting their time. They could have spent five, six, seven hours in the glory of God, in the streams of pleasure. Because they did not take up their kingship. They did not accept the blessing of God, the angels. You instruct angels to go and fight the wars. The king, the president, does not go to the war site. That's why you need to read your scrolls that you know what is the strategy. What is God's agenda? What do I need to do? What do I need to instruct them? That is life with Christ. But as, the, as to the Son, he says to him, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of absolute righteousness. God declares this morning, Your throne is forever and ever. Yes. Are you seated on it? Your scepter, scepter of righteousness. Who gets a scepter? Only kings. And that is one of the ways that the devil acknowledges you in the spiritual realm. Because only a few at this stage in the world has got scepters, true kingship. When the devil sees you with a scepter in your hand, in your hand he knows this guy is seated in Christ. He's taken possession of inheritance. He's a fierce fighter. He will destroy for God. I've got no chance. I better flee. A scepter you get when your breastplate has been restored with the 12 stones, when your crown has been restored with the 12 stones, and when you receive a scepter with 12 stones, the three of them, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one, makes the perfection and fullness of God. Clothed as a king. And that's where God is calling us in the season. He's shouting out to his kings. Take possession. Take back the river. Take back the river because we've released the rivers on earth to the devil. And the Lord appeared to me one day about eight weeks ago. I was sitting writing in my journal and the next moment I was slung off my chair, slain, and I sat and I looked in glory. And the next moment out of the glory came the ancient of days. I've never seen him. A 
I'd never seen him in that dimension. And what came out of him was love, wisdom, discernment, obedience, like in a dimension I've never, ever seen. And he said, this is your key. You need to meet the ancients of days to have that wisdom for this time and season to take back. The body of Christ lacks discernment because we look in the natural and we don't look. When people stand in front of you, don't just listen to their words. Don't just look at the action. The first place you always look is in the Spirit. Lord, show me their heart. Show me their thoughts. Show me everything about their spirit. That's the best gift you will have from God. One of the best. When you see exactly, oh no, this words and this action is definitely not what's in the heart and the spirit. And we allow people in our churches, congregations that are false. And we defile the people, the sheep. We need to meet the ancient of days. Wisdom, love, discernment, obedience. You'll step into the glory of God. The season when the Lord said to me, I said, from now on, stop being religious. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, why do you bind things? I said, Lord, you bind the demonic powers and people till they repent. I said, Listen here, Etienne. You're a king. A king destroys darkness. He said, we're in the season now to destroy Stop being religious. When you bind, it's only bounded for a season. Then it gets released again into the spirit and it just carries on its destruction. It said, go and destroy. Take the angels and destroy. The destroying angels, the hunter angels, the warring angels, all of them destroy. Be a king. God's doing something new. This conference is going to be something new. This morning again when I sat with him, showed me new angels being released this morning. And they've already started walking around this whole morning since. When I came in here the first time this morning, I came early because I was excited. I wanted to see what angels he's talking about. And I came and I had a look and I went back to my room. And they are all over. You need to open up your heart and your spirit to receive. You need to repent in yourself for not taking soul ownership. Not receiving the gift of God. Not, not acknowledging in the way that we should the cross, the blood of Jesus, and the majestic names of God. And I'm going to ask the worship Clarence and them to come to the front if possible. Because I want to do impartation. I want God to come and touch you with a kingly anointing. With an anointing that you've got a desire for possession. A desire to see and to hear. So that you can become that perfect imprint, image of God. In this time and season. And when you come to the front for impartation, believe me, people, it's important you're not receiving from me. You come with a thirst, you drink from the Deuteronomy 11 11, the rains of heaven. You stand in the fountain of life. Don't pray, don't sing, just receive. Because when you're busy praying and singing, you're not receiving. When you have received after that, you can go crazy for God. You worship Him. But come and take possession. So as God leads you, come to the front stand. I'll just hold your hands. I'm not just touching your hands. Receive the anointing. There'll be ushers. Don't worry about who's falling, who's slain, who's not. There are so many angels that want to minister to you as well. Just give me a gap here in front to come down. Father, and I just ask as we come, release your angels. Release your angels. And I ask that the Ruach in Kadesh, the breath of God, will come upon these people now. That you come and prepare their spirits. 
to receive your glory, to receive your touch, to receive your fire, Father. And that they'll open up their hearts, Father. That this day you will come and activate. I ask for an atmosphere of activation. Activation, Father. Let them just receive and they feel your love. As you just come and touch them and clothe them anew today. And we pray it in the name of our King. Our Majesty. Yeshua Hashem. So come, Holy Spirit. Consume this place. Consume these people. And we declare your glory in all of them. That they'll get a hunger and a thirst for you. Lord, we know if we touch the well, we become the well. Lord, and we want to be those wells for you. So we thank you and we praise you. Ko shoto rababa rakato. Eramani anko rabakater bariatra. Peshete rabani anke rabarado. Kormani ashete rabani liye. Keshender makatur ni andra. Pela la riaka rabani andra bababo. Ko shoto rebiya. Kera bariatra ebikir bite sheti reba. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. Let your healing flow out, Holy Spirit of God. Let your miracles pour through my hands. In a flood. Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. Let your healing flow out, Holy Spirit of God. Let your miracles flow through my hands in a flood. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. Let your rivers flow. Let your rivers flow. Everybody, can you step back just a little bit from the front line there? Please step back a little. standing behind someone who's being prayed for, give them room for the Holy Spirit to work. Just step back so you allow the Holy Spirit a place. And we'll get to you too. Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. 
Just receive right where you are. The Holy Spirit's moving all over the room. Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. Let your healing flow out, Holy Spirit of God. Let your miracles flow through my hands in a flood. Let your miracles flow through my hands in a flood. All you pour out, I Right now, let your rivers flow. I receive it, Lord. Let your rivers flow.
let your rivers flow.
pour out I receive Right now Oh, you pour out I receive Hallelujah
fountain of living water. You are the fountain of living water. And Lord, we come here to worship you. You are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water oh lord we've come to worship you we come We come to wash our lives in living water. We come to soak. We come to be changed and be refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord. You are the fountain of living water. the fountain of living water. You are the fountain of living water. Lord, we come to worship you. We come to dream. Come to wash our lives in living water. We come to soak, we come to be changed and be refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord. All you pour out, I receive. you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. Let the rivers flow. Let your rivers flow. Lord, I believe. 
Let your healing flow out, Holy Spirit of God. Let your miracles flow through my hands in a flood. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. Let your rivers flow. to wash our lives in living water. We come to soak, we come to be changed and be refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord. We come to drink, we come to bathe, to wash our lives in your living water. We come to soak, we come to be changed and be refreshed in your presence, O Lord. You are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water oh lord we come to worship you you are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water you are the fountain of living water oh lord we come to worship you we come to drink, we come to bathe, we come to wash our lives in living water, we come to soak, we come to be changed. And we're refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord. We're refreshed in your presence, O oh Lord. You are the fountain of living. 
If there are any more that need to be prayed for, we're inviting you to come up to the front. Just find a spot where there's room for the Holy Spirit to work. If you're wondering, do I want to be prayed for? The answer is yes, you do. The Holy Spirit is moving. Now's your chance. You are the fountain of living water. Jesus, you are the fountain of living water Jesus you're the fountain of living water oh Lord we come to worship you 
Let your spirit pour into me. I'm drinking you in, Lord, I believe. Let your healing flow out, Holy Spirit of God. Let your miracles flow through my hands in a flood. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. Right now, all you pour out, I receive. Yes. Yes, we say all you pour out, I receive. I receive the rivers flowing. I receive your river flowing. This day I receive your river flowing. In this year I receive your river flowing. Out through me, flow through me, rivers of living water, rivers of living water. and prophecy miracle power heavenly languages and interpretation and your gift of faith teaching evangelization prophets apostles sent forth by your spirit set apart by the living god in the last days let your river flow let your rivers flow from my innermost being let your rivers flow let your rivers flow from my innermost Yes, Lord, we receive of your rivers, we receive of your fountain, we receive of your spirit, crystal clear waters of life, we receive from your hand, crystal waters of your life in abundance your life in your spirit living water my my Etaruach HaKodesh Mayim Chayim All you pour out I'll receive All you pour out I'll receive Yes, all you pour out I'll receive let your rivers flow. Yes, let your rivers flow. Yes, let your rivers flow.
we've come to worship you. Fountain of living water of life. In this last day, you're revealing yourself through your Son. In this last day, you're revealing yourself through your people. In this last day, you're revealing yourself through the handmaids, through your servants. Just as you revealed in the past through the firstborn son, now you're revealing through us the adopted sons and daughters of God. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. All you pour out, I receive. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Let your river flow. Yes, let your river flow. We say, let your river flow. Just pray that with me in the congregation. Let your river flow. He's not finished yet. Let your river flow. you've done to us this morning. We thank you for the impartation. We, we thank you that we are a new creation in front of you. And we give you the, all the honor, all the blessings. And we exalt you and extol you as King of Kings. And we present you to all of creation as our first love, as our Lord of Lords, as the King of Kings, as the great I Am. We bless you, Lord. We love you. We adore you. And I ask that you seal it all with the blood of Jesus. And I ask that you bless each and every family here represented, each and every church, with the greatest gift of all, the fullness of your love. Amen and amen.